Hey, it's Kelt. Let's do a propaganda breakdown. Watch this clip. Hey, if you're from New Mexico and you plan on voting in your state's election coming up on Tuesday, listen up. The incumbent from the Democrat Party, Michelle Lujan Grisham, yeah, she got caught cheating in the debates. The local news agency responsible for putting on the debate, they not only sent her the questions weeks in advance, but they also sent her a script of how to answer them. Oh, and here come all the Democrats. Oh, these are false accusations. This is bullshit. We have the text, all the text. Here are the questions. Here's the coaching on how to answer them. At the bottom, they said, that's the playlist. She'll kill it. I've never wanted someone to be our governor more than I want to see Michelle. I've known her for such a long time. Yeah, she cheated. It's very obvious she cheated and we can easily prove it. So is this who you're voting for? I sincerely hope not. So it is true that there are allegations against Democratic candidate for New Mexico Governor Michelle Grisham. And those allegations were released by an attorney, Thomas Grover. Grover alleges that a photographer for the news station conducting the debate had a string of texts with Grisham's campaign about what the questions would be and how she should answer them. And the allegations themselves are not what makes this propaganda. It's how people like him are presenting these allegations. He's using two methods of presenting his propaganda that I personally refer to as headlining and propaganda by omission. It is very common knowledge that a majority of people do not read past the headline of an article. It's such common knowledge that a few years ago as an April Fool's joke, NPR did an article titled, Why Don't Americans Read Anymore? Inside the article, it talked about congratulations to genuine readers and talked about how people comment on NPR articles without even reading them. And people shared it all over Twitter, upset, claiming that it's not true that Americans don't read anymore. They read all the time. And because of that, that is a very useful method of spreading propaganda, just showing a sensational headline without any other context. Now, there is a difference between showing people an article like the headline and the site so that you can refer to it versus headlining. But you can tell this is headlining because he has purposely cut everything out except the headline, including cutting out anything that would actually direct you to that article, including the name of the site that it's on. It's almost like he doesn't want you to easily be able to pull up the article he's referencing and verify his sources. Now, headlining pairs really well with the other type of method that I refer to as propaganda by omission. Partly because headlining is a type of propaganda by omission. But I differentiate him because he goes on and talks about the events instead of just showing the article. What they don't say about an event or an accusation tells you a lot about what they're trying to do. First, in that entire video, he doesn't give any time or date when this supposedly happened. Leaving the viewer to assume that the allegations are about this election cycle. But that's not the case. These allegations are about an event that supposedly happened in October 2018. Now, if it's later determined that she cheated in the debate, then she cheated in the debate. When it happened doesn't change the fact that if it's true, it's true. But none of this is verified yet. But by removing the talk of when this happened and trying to make it seem like this is something that just happened, he's making sure that people don't ask the very obvious skeptical question. That no one found out about this for four years and just determined that it happened a few days before the election. Seems a little different now, and you have questions now that you think about the fact that no one came forward with this for four full years. And the last big part, he states, we have the texts, we can prove she cheated. Completely leaving out the fact that no one has verified that the texts are real. To the point that even the New Mexico GOP admits that the texts have not been verified for authenticity yet. It's right there. If the texts are verified. And that leads to the final thing that there's no mention of. The news station that is being accused of providing these texts deny the allegations against them and are willing to cooperate with an investigation to determine if it actually happened. So in summary, not showing you where he got this information from by cutting out everything except the article headline. Also leaving out that this happened four years ago and nothing has been verified as authentic. So at this point, this is accusation and hearsay being used as propaganda. Now if it's proven that she cheated, then yes, she cheated and needs to be held accountable. But first, you actually have to prove it. And second, present the story as the whole story, not just the propaganda that you want to push. For those of you who are interested, here's the Google search that I did that pulled up the articles referenced in this video.